to it, they do say a lot of very good things. And, and one of the things that maybe, I mean, is an overall impression that you can get out of that is that there's a huge difference in um, construction and design with concrete as opposed to a material like steel. Steel, there's not too many ways you can screw it up. And fortunately, when you screw it up, you can usually correct it. I mean, if, you screw, if you're putting together a steel structure, what can you do? Leave a bolt out or something? Mm, well, <laughs> it's very easy to inspect and see that it's wrong and correct it. As opposed to concrete, that's usually harder to inspect. There are, there are methods, by the way, to uh, non-destructive methods to test it. Once it's in place, uh, a Schmidt hammer is one where you have a, uh, a little device that you uh, knock against it and it measures the density. Uh, sometimes it's x-rayed or something, but you get an idea even in place of the strength. But if there's a problem, man, that's not so easy to correct. And you can see there are a lot of ways, I mean, when you, when you think of that, that film and the description of it, oh, let's see, you know, I bet I don't have this turned on. Not that it matters. See if that's on, is it on on the podium? It'll probably explode now. Um, there, are, there are a lot, whew, man, and that's on. <laughs> There, there are a lot of uh, things in, in, from the design of the mix, the batching, the placement, the curing, that impact the final strength. So it's not, it, that's another big difference with steel. You specify, you know, the uh, ASTM grade of steel, and unless somebody screws up, that's what you get. You get that, that strength at the site. With concrete, there are, there are many more places where it can screw up. First, you have to specify the right concrete. Then it has to be uh, actually produced correctly, batched uh, correctly. The ingredients have to be properly proportioned. The transport uh, has to be correct, that it has to be tumble. Those trucks that, that you know, tumble the uh, concrete, they go at a certain speed and a certain number of revolutions. And once, once it leaves the plant, Usually the water is added at the plant, and it starts mixing as it goes. I mean, there's a there's a clock that's ticking when that as soon as the water hits that cement, uh, and it's a it's a chemical reaction. It's like uh, you can think of it as a slow reaction compared to uh, acrylic. But if you've ever worked with uh, well, polyester, you know that that. Or, or epoxy, you know, that you have that concept. You mix the two things together and you stir it up and by golly, you've got like 30 seconds to do something with it or it's going to be hard in the cup, you know, and then, then you, okay, well, <laughs> that's, that's it. Well, concrete's the same thing, only it's, it's a little bit longer. You maybe have a, you know, an hour or something or whatever the time is, depending on the, uh, the, the type of concrete and the way it's been batched, but there is a clock that's ticking and there's a, um, one of the critical points is when that, that truck arrives at the, the site, uh, unlike steel, you know, you deliver the truck arrives at the site and they just pile it up, you know. <laughs> I mean, eventually they put it up. But concrete, that truck arrives and everybody's got to be ready to go. Your crew has to be, they can't be sitting there eating lunch and saying, well, I've still got two bologna sandwiches to go. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when that truck gets there, you've got you've to have people where, and sometimes that is the architect. I mean, I've been in that position where I've got to get the guys, come on, it's time. And, and if it's a good crew, I mean, they realize that. That's, but, you know, that is part of what, what um, gives concrete its, uh, you know, the quality. And it's got to, it's got to be uh, placed and placed properly. Then you can screw it up in placing it. You saw with the, the vibrators, uh, you can properly vibrate or you can improperly vibrate by, by dragging the thing along. And what happens is, or over vibrate, the vibration is to get the air voids out. But if you over vibrate, it, it separates it. Suddenly you get rocks at the bottom and, and goo at the top, and that's, and, and that's trash. Um, or, you know, all the other uh, things. I'll, I'll post that, I think, somehow. I'll post that. And you might even want to download it and look at it yourself one more time through. Because it really, it is a valuable video. They say a lot of, I think, on the, on the level of, 
of what you'll probably be in contact with if you ever you know are at a site or if you're involved in in the concrete in a concrete design I mean just the realization that there are so many factors that uh, imp impact the the strength um, you know the the uh, then what was the other one they talked about the locate yeah well location in terms of of you know the temperature impacts the the uh, chemical process obviously since it has water in it my goodness if it freezes you've had it you know the thing's going to get ice crystals ice is water is one of the few things on this planet that when it gets cold it gets bigger you know when you think about that almost everything else it gets cold it gets smaller but water, it gets cold, it gets bigger. It freezes, ice is bigger than water, or liquid, right? It gets, and it gets bigger. And this is the problem in, if you have a, uh, something cast with it, it expands uh, because it's ice, and then when the ice thaws, then oh, it's, it's trash. You've got, you've got cracks all through it. Anyway, well, I won't, won't repeat it all, but, um, but <clears throat> we will talk a little bit about it. Uh, and about the, the constituent parts. This is a little chunk, and you can pass this around. There's a couple things you can observe it, uh, about this. Uh, well, I, I'll pretend that I'm observing. I can't see it because I don't have my glasses on, but I believe what I'm looking at <laughs> here is um, this, was, this was taken out of an a, um, exterior slab. It was a core sample that was pulled out, and this, this is an example that does have some air and training in it. And you can see what air and training is. It's not big bubbles. Uh, actually, the air and train bubbles, they're, they're in the visible range, I guess, but they're not very big. I mean, you could see them better if you had a magnifying glass. They're little tiny bubbles. But those little bubbles are very important to exterior grade concrete, right? The, the air and training they talked about. The sidewalk in Chicago is not like the sidewalk in Florida. I don't even want to say the word. Um, because that, when, when that uh, goes through a free thaw cycle, those little tiny bubbles give the ice some place to go. If the bubbles aren't there, the ice just cracks the, the interior, interior uh, you know, poor water, uh, cracks the concrete. So you can, you can get an idea of what the, you know, the big bubbles that you see here, those, aren't, those are mistakes. <laughs> it's the little tiny bubbles that you can barely see. Those are air entrainment. Uh, the other thing you can look at this, Look at, look at the aggregate. It's not all the same size. It's not like they just dump rocks in there. Uh, there are uh, carefully proportioned uh, sizes of rocks. Um, uh, aggregate in concrete is graded, uh, meaning that there is a, a, a proportion from very fine rocks to very coarse rocks. Here, you can pass that around. Um, and the reason is to get a, um, a denser, a denser uh, mix, a, a denser aggregate. If you had um, something to measure with, a bucket, and, and you filled it full of, of gravel, and the gravel was all exactly the same size, let's say, oops, it's hard to draw gravel the same size. OK, well, there would be a certain um, solid void ratio here, a certain, you know, ratio of the, the rocks to the, to the voids. If you, if you uh, take the same thing and do it with smaller rocks, it would take a lot longer to draw. <laughs> and you could be here for a while, but eventually you'd get the idea. You'd fill it up. What would, that, what would that do to the solid void ratio? Would the solid void ratio go up or down? And it, let's see, it, would I have more solids? Would I, if I weighed these two, right? Because the air doesn't weigh anything. Let's say I just fill it with. <laughs> Which one's going to be heavier? <laughs> that sounded like agreement. Would you believe they, they if you have really, you know, the, it's just a matter of, of scale. These should weigh the same thing. And if I have another beaker and I fill it full of, full of sand, it also weighs the same thing. If it's the same, you know, say it's all limestone. You know, limestone, uh, one and a half inch, three quarter inch, and then manufactured 
well, no, not manufactured, great, uh, non-graded sand, sand that's all the same size. If, if all those three are the same size, it's just a matter of scale. It's just, come on, I'm just, you know, it's like you're, you drew it and then you hit this, you know, scale command, you make it bigger. But making it bigger, you've made the voids as big as the, it all scales together, right? The solids and the voids. So the, the, the proportion of solids to voids stays the same. You've just, you've just changed the scale. So if you have all the same size rocks, you're, you're going to have a, a, a set solid void ratio and you're not going to be able to change it. But, but if you had this bucket, the voids would be bigger because you've scaled, this is a bigger scale, right? So you could take some of these little ones and put them in here. You know, look at this. Now you're adding rocks to it. Of course it's going to get heavier. It's getting denser. And, and you could not only add this size, you could throw in a little sand. Oh, and that would <laughs> fill in the other little holes. So, so you can, you know, by proper grading, a, 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 a scale of, of uh, and this, in, this is also for the, the sand. Well, 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 the sand that you use in concrete, there should be another slide here. <laughs> Talk for 10 minutes and forget to push the buttons. There we go. Uh, this, the sand that you use in, in concrete is not like the sand that you know and love from your sandbox at home. That, that's sand, beach sand, if you will, you know, that, that's, that's um, non-graded. It means it's all the same size, right? It's all the same, more or less. That's all the same size. So if you use that kind of sand, then you'd have the same problem, I mean, at a different scale. Then you wouldn't, wouldn't have, so you want that gradation of aggregate, you know, this and this, even to apply at the sand level. And concrete sand, it's called manufactured sand or uh, graded sand. It goes from very fines, you know, kind of dusty stuff almost, down to, uh, uh, or up to, <laughs> depending on the way you think about it, uh, quarter inch aggregate. So from quarter inch all the, all the way to fines would be uh, a mix of, of uh, concrete type sand, not, not uh, beach sand. You do use uh, non-graded sand in, in mortar mixes for a very different reason. It, because it, <coughs> being all the same size, it, it makes it uh, much more workable. You can spread it like, like peanut butter, you know, without the nuts. Everybody knows crunchy does not spread as nicely as smooth. <laughs> well, so you get, you get all the same size sand and it spreads a lot smoother and, and that, that workability is more important than the strength for mortar. But for concrete, uh, that's not quite so. You, you want the strength, so that grading that grading's very important. What else? Here, turn those lights off. Let's, let's look at these lovely pictures. Okay, so these are, this, just to say, kind of reiterate the the things that go into it. Sand, th this is, together is aggregate, really. Sand is an aggregate, too, but they, they, you separate it out, usually. Sand is, this isn't the world's best picture of it, but, but um, this is all crushed limestone. Um, all these are the same material, uh, and this is the, uh, crushed limestone's pretty good for aggregate because it's, it's, uh, it has a good density, it, it's not friable, it, it, I mean, it doesn't come apart, it's strong, and it's, it's angular. It's, when you crush it, it's kind of got very irregular shape, which means in the concrete, it kind of keys in physically uh, and makes it uh, denser. Even dry, I mean, this is true. If you took, uh, this is why it's maybe a little naive, you've probably driven on it. You, you, you buy a rock for your driveway, you get like probably one inch, or maybe three-quarter inch uh, crushed limestone. You put it down there, you, you compact that, smooth it out, and you can drive over it quite a bit, and it's not mushy because, it, it, uh, because of the irregular shape it kind of locks together. If you get river rock that's dredged out of a river, it's round. You, you know, it looks pretty, right? It's kind of polishy looking, has nice colors. Uh, also, it's very hard. It has a lot of quartz in it usually, and, but the smoothness does not mechanically um, 
locked together. And when you, if you have it in a driveway and you drive across it, your tires mush down. You know, you walk across it and you kind of your feet or you ever walk across pea gravel, right? You have a pea gravel walk, your feet kind of mush into it a little bit. Um, anyway, well, you, you can pay attention to the world you step on, you know? It's, um, so that's, a, that's an advantage of this crushed rock. Also, you get an idea of the, the, the grading. Usually in uh, architectural stuff, because of the size of the, the members and the, the placement of the bars, you, you know, one inch, three quarter inch, something like that's probably the maximum size. If it's a really big member, you might get a little bit bigger. Aggregate like this, this is, I don't know for sure what this is, but it looks like one and a half to me. That's definitely a pretty large piece. Um, anyway, that might be for uh, a larger uh, road construction or it might be for, I don't know, some larger casting. Uh, so this is three eighths. This is kind of small. So somewhere in between here is probably the uh, maximum size for architectural use. Um, all right, cement. Yeah, this is that's a sack of cement. In case you haven't seen one, um, ninety-four pounds, I think. Where <laughs> somewhere. I don't know why there's such an odd. Oh, I think it, it's. What is it? There's a reason why it's it's ninety-four pounds. I don't, I don't remember what it is now. It's how it proportions with. Uh, uh, mixing by hand, I think, and fits and things. Anyway, these are the different types. This is the common type, um, whatever, low sulfite. This is the one you use in winter, right, type three. So you'd see that around here quite a bit uh, available. Like if you went down to Lowe's, one would guess you could get that off the shelf because it's because we have winter here, you know. Uh, this one is the one that's the uh, slow cure. Concrete does produce, if you've ever worked with it, it is a chemical reaction, and the cement reacting with the water does generate heat. There's a hydration. It strips the, the uh, hydrogen out of the water, breaks that chemical bond, and water is not an easy thing to break in half, you know, so that generates a little bit of heat. And, and if you've got a lot of cement, uh, I mean, like, there can be different, there can be a rich or a lean mix uh, proportion amount of cement in the concrete. You know, right, right? The cement is not concrete. Concrete is rocks and sand and, and water and cement. But if you've got a lot of, if the cement part in your recipe is, is high, uh, it will generate more heat than, than uh, a lower ratio. So very rich mixes, you might want to use type 4 to keep the heat down. The problem is if you get it too hot, the whole thing does expand through heat, and then it, when, it, when the heat cools off, it, it uh, shrinks. There, I've uh, seen, when I was down in Tennessee, they built some big dams, and uh, I knew some of the people that worked on those, and they said they physically put ice. They mixed it not with water, but they'd mix the uh, concrete with ice, because the, I mean, you're talking about really massive casts that are several yards thick as they, uh, you know, cast these big uh, dams. And they, it generated so much heat that it was a, a serious problem. They had to somehow reduce the heat. Even with this and reducing the amount of cement in the mix, they still had so much heat they were mixing it with ice to try to keep it from generating so much heat. Anyway, okay, so cement and the last bit, water. The, the only stipulation with water is they, they usually say potable which it doesn't really have to be pot potable means you could drink it. Eh, it's not so much that it's potable, it has to be drinking water. It's just you don't want organic trash in it. Uh, you don't want, you know, leaves and, uh, you know, sludge and scum. And, you know, I mean, you don't want to be scooping the river, you know, some water out of the river. You also don't want um, stray chemicals in there that you, don't, you can't control that might degrade, like, a lot of salt. You wouldn't want to use salt water. That would be a no-no, or uh, you know something like that. But it's usually usually organic material that you've got to be careful about. Okay, they showed they they showed this guy making this, but they didn't, didn't quite show it all the way. I wish they would have. Uh, this is how you measure workability on the site with a a, a slump cone, and this is done pretty regularly uh, because. Um, 
you know, they're trying to, it, particularly with a slab, it, it can be, uh, you know, people are constantly shouting to put more water in it, but you don't want to put more water in it because that degrades the strength, and, and, but you do have to keep it workable, and you might have to add uh, either water or add an admixture even on site if, if the workability drops because you, for, you have to be able to spread it or you're not going to get the, the product you want. Um, what, the way this works is it's simply you, you cast uh, in this little cone uh, this cone of concrete and then you lift it up. It's a, you know, it's a ASTM uh, procedure. You have to put the, put the cone down, you lift it, you, you pour in a third of the cone, 28 rods, another third, 28 rods, another third, 28 rods, lift it off, set the cone beside it like that he did. He lifted it off here. Well, he didn't, he has a special little thing. Usually they set the cone beside it. You put this rod across the top of the cone and then you measure from that rod the amount that the uh, concrete slumps and that is called the slump measurement and that slump uh, is used as a gauge of the stiffness. If you have a, a low slump like a slump of one, that's, that would be one inch, that means, that means it only dropped an inch. It, it just went ugh, one inch, that's not very much. That means they're not, you're, no way you're going to cast that into a slab. They, they were talking about that uh, machine, you saw the, the curb machine. Well, yeah, that takes it practically dry up that conveyor belt, dumps it in a hopper, and presses it into a mold. Okay, that, yeah, slump of one may, may be okay for that. Precast uh, has very low slump because they, they pound it into the form practically sometimes, or it, at any rate, they have control over it. But a slab on site, you'd have to have a much higher slump, like four to six or something. Maybe it says up there, two to six, uh, without vibration. Whatever. Um, if you get too much slump, you know, like maybe beyond six inches, then you've got soup. And that's also a bad sign. There's something gone wrong. Somebody put way too much water in it, and you're going to have garbage. You know, you'll have to rip it out, and there's going to be a big problem. So it would be better not even to use it than to, to uh, go on with it. The biggest thing that affects uh, strength is this, the water cement ratio. And they, ref they, they mentioned that several times, you know, about the, certainly there was one, oh, oh I know, when the guy was adding water, you know, a big circle with a, <laughs> no, <laughs> red, do not do. Yeah, that's one of the things uh, that you have to be very careful about. Even if, if you were somehow involved in a project and, and controlling it, people will, you know, it's very tempting to add more water and it, as a solution to, you not working fast enough or somehow not having been organized enough, the truck sits there too long, it's starting to harden up. Either you add more water or you dump, you dump nine yards of concrete in your front yard. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> but if you dump it in your, what's going to be your driveway, it may be garbage if you add too much water to it. See, so you got these, these problems of life. Uh, but adding water uh, does does degrade the strength that more than anything else the more water you put in there the 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 strength is in fact is probably the other thing well I'll say while, while we're on this uh, the cement concrete you uh, cement content that's how much cement is in the concrete it putting more cement in to an extent does usually increase the strength it's the the real binder uh, but having too much cement in there probably doesn't help because really the rocks are, us are stronger than the paste. Uh, the other problem is, that's probably more critical, is the cement costs a lot more than the rocks. So the more cement, the richer the mix is, the more expensive it is. So generally you try to, to keep this as low as you can uh, for cost reasons, but also for, uh, but you have to balance it. Uh, more cement makes it more workable. Okay, this is, this is, this shows you uh, graphically, here's water cement ratio. This is the strength, right? So you can see as a high water, this is maybe uh, 0.65, the strength is below 1,000. 0.4, it's up over 3,000. So three times the strength just by putting in, and there's not, that's not a great deal of water difference. Just, uh, you know, two tenths of a, 
of uh, whatever that is, <laughs> of the ratio of the water to the cement. It's not water to concrete. This isn't water to concrete ratio. It's water to cement. And you've got to think the cement is not the biggest constituent of the concrete. So it doesn't take much water to drastically change the behavior of the concrete because it's a water cement ratio, not water concrete ratio. So a little bit of water in the mix suddenly changes you on this, on this graph. Changes the workability quite a bit, but it also changes the strength. So as you know, the truck may arrive here and here's after two bologna sandwiches and then, then you kick around and then you pile, and you know, somebody says, let's add some more water because I, this is really hard. <laughs> so the, the more water you add, your strength is just going down, down, down. It's not good. All right, well, that was probably as good a place as any to stop. Monday, you realize there'll be a little examination in here of your intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, you will, you'll be prepared, right, with a pencil and um, calculator and two cups of coffee behind you, right? Very good, very good.